Hello and welcome to NAFDAQ and your else, where we bring you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ, the agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding the health of the nation by ensuring that the food, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. My name is Tosin Omolaja. Last week, we began with a journey exploring achievements of NAFDAQ over the last three years under the leadership of Professor Mujisola Adeyeyi. Today, we continue with reflections on how much the agency has grown and in fact been transformed since she took the helms three years ago. It's been wonderful um, having um, Professor uh, Christiana Mujisola Adeyeyi um, as the Director General of NAFDAQ. Uh, she brought uh, very wonderful ideas and uh, she's got remarkable uh, leadership skills also. And um, um, the, the most significant that I would like to highlight is the fact that uh, she brought about um, a change in, you know, um, reasoning of, of staff, you know. She made um, people become more intellectual in their reasoning, in their thoughts, you know, rather than, you know, being laid back and thinking, you know, things may not be workable. She, she's made people uh, come out to actually task their brains and, she, I mean, that made, I mean, it, it made it obvious or made people realize that we have great potentials within the agency and uh, really there is a lot that can be achieved and in terms of even creating systems within the agency that makes things go better you know in terms of uh, maybe bringing in technology and all that there are lots of staff who you know really develop tools that you know have become very useful you know within the system that um, you know we can use and we have been using you know to better um, you know the service we, we render to to the public over the last three years there has been tremendous development in the agency's food registration and regulatory activities, touching every player in the sector. From the big corporations to the micro and small scale enterprises, one major change aimed at upscaling and optimizing service delivery across all its operations was Professor Adeyeye's decision to decentralize NAFDAQ's operations, allowing for effective regulatory activities all across the country. We decentralized registration of foods uh, mid 2018. It used to be all central, meaning you know, the central Abuja, Nab, uh, Lagos still have to approve. But because we now have directors in the zones, we decentralized so that the approval of foods can now be done at the zonal level. They don't need to send it to the director in Lagos to approve because we now have directors in the, in the, in, in the zones. Since the DG came, we had, um, she has engaged with the food industry very, very well. Um, there is the AFBT, we had the, um, an interaction with the food sector. She had, you know, um, a meeting where every player in the food sector was invited. And um, we had a regulatory interaction with them, an event with them, you know. We had that interaction and it was very successful and it was very, very innovative in the sense that everybody came, even the smallest MSME who had issues came and they were given an opportunity to talk at that forum. To further improve its regulatory activities in this sector, the directorate responsible for registration was carved into two and a specific directorate was created for food registration and regulatory affairs. The new directorate, Food Registration and Regulatory Affairs, was created in 2019 with the main purpose of enhancing and expanding our technical capabilities in food regulation and in food business control. This has been entrenched by the fact that there is a directorate meant for food professionals. Now the food professionals can interact comfortably, sharing knowledge with their counterparts in the food industry. 
the things that could not be achieved in years past are now better achieved. We spend less time, the customers are satisfied. Our resolution time in resolving customer complaint has reduced in less than 24 hours. We reach out to our customers and that is the form of business collaboration we are talking about. In registration of uh, food products, be it locally manufactured products, be it imported, we have been able to streamline it to 90 working days. But I tell you, in the last three years, we register products even less. And the beauty of it is that even in the last one year, with the creation of this directorate, we don't need to wait for three months for your products to be registered. So you could have your product registered within 30 working days, but not more than 90 working days, except there are challenges, which most times is an outrage from the will be stakeholders. So we are having a couple in the last one year stakeholders training, stakeholders workshop, stakeholders interaction. So the food business and food regulation activity is so coupled and with our e-registration platforms it's now easier to register food products in the country. So creating this directorate has been unique. Creating this directorate has helped us also in capacity building to stretch forth and come up with good best practices. A very significant percentage of food production takes place within the micro, small and medium enterprise sector. And this fact means that a lot of attention must be paid to the players in this sector. First, to ensure and guarantee the quality of foods put on the markets for Nigerians to consume. And secondly, to key into the government's job creation drive. To achieve these goals, apart from making it possible to register food products in all six geopolitical zones and the FCT, the DG went further and created the Lagos State Office, LSO, to focus on the MSME sector. The Lagos State Office was created because of the size of Lagos. FSAN itself, the core uh, office, does a lot of uh, food approvals and so on. But we separated some, many of the items for Lagos State Office to take care of. So based on the size of Lagos, that office is very, very busy. That is the LSO office. So now it is not just that you can register at the zones. Now we have a Lagos State office aside from the central office in Isolo. We didn't really know that we had so many people interested in this sector. And then what she did was that she gave us a directive to find out those that were involved in this sector and see how we can bring public enlightenment to them. You know, making them understand what we do in NAFTA. Because one of the feelers she got was that a lot of people didn't seem to know what we were doing, despite the fact that we were doing so much. And so she gave us that directive. We went out of our way, you know, looking at the number of local governments that we have here in Lagos. We have 20 local governments. So we structured our activities along that line. You know, like I said, we did a lot of enlightenment programs education, you know, for people to really know what um, it, it means to actually get involved with uh, the, regulatory the regulatory activities of NAFTA. And at the same time, we started getting fillers back from them. The minute we were able to get fillers back from them, we took it back to, to the DG to say, these are their concerns. These are the things that are affecting their type of business. And in no time, she introduced a number of incentives. There was a 50% reduction. There was um, uh, encouraging accepting shared facility for those who didn't even have facilities to even produce. She even went to the extent of saying, kitchen scale, you could actually produce 
in your kitchen as long as the product was low risk and dry you know we had to explain to them how that could you know could work work out then we also had them um, expedited process the products go into the lab because most times people tell us that our products stay long our registration process stays long so what we did there was to talk to her about having to expedite the process you know at the lab at the laboratory level so that we know whether these products are satisfactory or not and she put out instructions that uh, and said we should go ahead and she approved this and this is a message we have been sending to all the different sectoral groups and they were beginning to ask themselves you mean this is really possible in nigeria or in lagos and we said yes Nafdak and your else will be back in a short while. Don't go away. Come inside, oh! Yes. Tired, tired. Thank you, thank you, come thank sit down, you. sit down. Wait, Mama Junior and Junior now. Good day, oh! Mama, the mama! <laughs> hey, Junior, yeah, quick! Come go buy alcohol for your uncle for antique arrow shop. No, no, no. Go sit down, Junior. No, now, bros. What do you want to do so? You know, no say if you send Junior to go buy alcohol like this, small time now, in here go begin and turn Instead go one day drink alcohol for this in small picking age. Ha! Bros, I beg, give me the money. Make I go buy and buy myself. I did not know. Wait, I tell you before. Navdak talk say alcohol. Now no no for picking whenever reach 18 years. I don't go send out that kind of message again. Yes, so my people. Now me, you, parent, guardians, marketers, and even retailers self. So post stop small small picking them. Maybe they know they drink alcohol for this week community. Oh. Join us today. Now, Distillers and Blenders Association of Nigeria, NAFDAC, and Federal Ministry of Health bring you this message. Oh. You're welcome back. In case you're just joining in, you're watching NAFDAC and your else. The COVID-19 pandemic dealt a painful blow to the economy of the world and Nigeria was not spared at the slightest. Professor Adeye, in her commitment to ensuring that this sector stays afloat, put in place palliatives to help micro, small and medium-scale producers stay in the regulatory pool. She introduced the zero tariff for the first 200. This is just to encourage them because, like I told you, regulation is very important. She said 80% reduction you know, in fees. If, take for example, remember we had, it was 50% before, then she now said, Give them 80%, you know, reduction. So that at least all they need to do is pay 20. And so then for any product of food or cosmetics, because those are the areas that we concentrate, you know, you know, in, on. Give them, the, instead of paying 30 something thousand, let them pay 7,000. At least they can afford to do that. And then we said for those who can't renew because they don't even have funds, especially during this COVID period, let them have a waiver. And all these things were for six months which we have done. And you would not believe how many people, how many applications came into the system. For us, we are very happy about that. And you know why? Because they are involved in so many NAFTA related products that if you do not control, can cause a lot of um, problems for the users. A lot of us take Gary, for example, but you know, a lot of Garys that have been analyzed here, we find out that they have very high cyanide content quite a lot of them so we have the opportunity of trying to teach them or train them on why that um, gary has high cyanide con content so that you don't destroy our people by making them take what is not right if we were not controlling them then you can imagine what would have happened scientifically we have a standard a, a minimum standard that must be allowed most of them fails. So we have to go back to the drawing board. We say, okay, call this group. We discuss with them, educate them, teach them better processing method. If you are processing your gari for one week, you, you keep it for pressing or fermentation. You have to keep it for uh, two weeks, 14 days. And we started achieving better results in that area. Then we, we, we advise them on proper frying. Because by the time you are frying it, it evaporates. The cyanide goes into the atmosphere. Then you, you have a better gary. And because of our, of our training, like we would have expected microbiological factors, probably in the areas because of and 
hand clean. We have been able to educate them on the use of hand gloves and proper cleaning of hands and having good hygiene system in place. Yes, if you look at how the trend of our lab result, finger foods has been perfect. Chin chin, plantain chips, and granite. We have done so very well. And we have even gone to the state, the issue of allergens, which people don't know. We have been able to teach them, they are, they are really appreciating. But we have taught them the science and technology in these products. So they are really appreciating us as, a, as an office, as an agency, they are appreciating NAMDAC. The menace of middlemen commonly referred to as consultants had become a clog in the wheel of registration, especially for micro and small scale producers. When the DG assumed office, she immediately outlawed this practice and so a campaign to enlighten prospective food producers on all the new measures of the agency was put in place. It is expedient to state emphatically that NAPDAS management discourages the use of middlemen or agents for the purposes of product registration as applicants are welcome to visit NAVDAT offices nearest to them when necessary and could also communicate through established official channels like emails. I would like to mention here that the responsibility of ensuring quality, safety and efficacy of regulated products does not lie solely with NAVDAT but with all of us, with the stakeholders included. It is very important to understand that you do not need a middleman. Uh, I've, been, I've been asked questions. How come that you are charging 200,000? I said, we don't charge 200,000 Naira. We don't. Our registration is about 21,000 Naira. <laughs> Our and that is after the deduction, after the 50 percent discount, rather. Our registration is about 21,000 naira. One of the good things the DG also did when she came is to stop consultants from dealing with NAVDAC. NAVDAC doesn't, we don't deal with consultants anymore, we don't recognize them. And that is what leads to something they call transactional corruption, because when you are dealing with people who are, don't directly deal you know, with, I mean, who are not part of the system, they will engage with you and demand for things they should not be demanding for. There is no, it doesn't make sense for you to have to pay 30,000 officially. And then you go around to go on to pay as high as 300,000. It doesn't make sense. You can just walk into any of the NAVDAC offices. There are directors all over Nigeria in the six geopolitical zones, in FCT, in Lagos, you know, even NAVDAC staff, you could use calling or the hotlines are there. You, you should not be afraid of NAVDAC. For Lagos, for example, we created an, an area where they can actually sit down and you have officers attend to them and listen to their concerns. Inspections are a critical part of regulatory activities the world over. The whole point of which is to ensure that production of foods are done with good manufacturing practice and that it is so done consistently all the time. Although there are serious punitive actions and sanctions for those who flaunt the rules, NAFDAC is more interested in encouraging and ensuring that all players in the regulated products arena operate within the rules for the safety of public health. In terms of inspections, we've really wrapped up, you know, in terms of, um, uh, you know, technical input to what we do. Um, there has been a lot of, um, you know, um, improvements. So we don't just um, go for inspections and look at the surface. We go really deep, you know, and um, we apply, we think, you know, um, we, we, we look at the science behind everything we do, all the inspections, all the processes that we evaluate, we look at the science behind it and see whether um, this can work or where it cannot work, we apply, I mean, we give the necessary guidance to the industry. So in terms of inspections, you know, it has gone to the next level and we are even, even take, taking it higher, you know, by continually developing staff, you know, and also 
increasing the uh, knowledge and capacity of staff to be able to carry out um, uh, inspections. The COVID came in to you know, stop a lot of things this year, but for, I mean, before COVID, we were actually you know, doing a lot. We had a lot of companies, uh, factories uh, that were shut down you know, in 2019 because of poor GMP. Uh, GMP is a good manufacturing practice because they were not doing what they were supposed to be doing and we were doing a lot of that. We had teams going around, you know, we were doing um, maybe, um, you know, each team would do about 20 to 25 factories in a week, you know, and we had about uh, four teams. The idea of what we do in NAVDAC is not to kill or destroy companies. We want to make sure they do the right thing and produce what is safe for people. However, for companies that we notice, uh, that we know are really, you know, a danger to public health, we'll make an announcement that such and so company has been shut down because of so so and so reasons. For companies that have effected corrective actions and those things have, um, or preventive and corrective actions and those things have been put in place, um, uh, there is no need for an announcement. Appropriate uh, um, regulatory actions, sanctions are applied on them, and uh, it is. But that is when such acts do not. Comp I mean, do not pose a danger to public health. When it does pose a danger to public health, an announcement is made. The product is mentioned. The company is mentioned, and usually the products will be taken out of circulation. In the past, I mean, um, in the past couple, one or two years, there have been a very severe sanctions on very uh, significant companies um, you know you know so and those things, those sanctions have been very stiff we dealt with quite a number of companies that quite a number of companies that were closed down we closed down so many water factories we closed down so many bakeries we closed down we even stopped some major multinationals from working we shut down their factories because of um, uh, poor GMP or maybe one or two problems or malfunctions in the system. So that is that. So um, there has been a lot of sanctions and, and that is still ongoing. This is how much we can take today on the program NAFDAQ and your health. Join us same time, same station next week for a fresh edition of the program. In the meantime, if you have comments or complaints or you want to report fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFDA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email nafdac at nafdac.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 0909-763-0506 or 0909-763-0506. 7630507 Nafdak customer focused agency minded Importing, producing, distributing and selling fake drugs, cosmetics and adulterated foods are criminal activities that destroy lives. Join the fight against these heinous crimes by reporting any suspicious activity in your area to Nafdak. Let's join hands to safeguard the health of our nation. Till next week, stay safe.